Hello and welcome to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen Guide. Uh, those of you who might have seen my original guide on Reddit, um, I used to write um, a full-fledged uh, guide for XCOM 2, and this is basically my attempt to renew and update the original guide. So, without further ado, if you want to play Legendary Iron Man, and if you want to be like me, one year into the game, like having it finished, uh, swimming in money, having all of the countries liberated, and still end up with the zero fallen or deceased soldiers, but a lot of um, a lot of killed enemies, as you can see here. You might want to listen closely. So there is not. There's not the one way of playing XCOM 2, there are multiple ways, and I'm only going to share with you my personal preference of how to play the game. You might deviate in your playstyle, but I can tell you what worked for me. This, gu uh, this guide, um, or better, the series of guides that I will put together within this playlist for you, will cover everything you need to know, and will created into a format where I always explain why something works and why something doesn't work. Uh, this video specifically is going to go over build order and priorities um, and on the macro level here on the globe. Because a lot of players ask me, second, what's the first building? What should I focus on? There's so much to do in the game and specifically on Legendary, you're not allowed to make any mistakes whatsoever. Now, I answer usually with, um, let's take a first look about what is really needed. Let's start with buildings first, um, and look at the first buildings that you can actually produce, which is A, the Guerrilla Tactic School, an option where you can train and upgrade soldiers, um, such as Rookie Geoff James, and where you can uh, build new combat tactics, which will increase either your squad size or the capabilities of some of your um, of your soldiers. That is a very vital, um, uh, very vital uh, part of the game. You can also build a resistance ring relatively early in the game, which gives you access to the so-called covered actions, uh, specific unique missions that uh, that you might want to pursue for one of the factions in the game, and you get uh, the option for a training center and an infirmary training center here being uh, and uh, uh, being uh, one of the buildings that allows you to train your many many soldiers that you later are going to have an infirmary uh, being kind of the hospital um, uh, which also allows you to respec now if you take a look at all of these buildings my preferred build order after playing a lot of XCOM 2 and now a little bit of War of the Chosen is I usually like to start with the Guerrilla Tactic School because uh, once you grow up uh, with the Guerrilla Tactic School you can produce new uh, squaddy soldiers you know do no longer need to uh, stick with the rookies and squad size 1 and squad size 2 are just absolutely vital upgrades to make your game easier you cannot go wrong with going uh, with that first that being said after you do it uh, you can either oh i forgot one of the buildings proving grounds you can either go for resistance ring or proving grounds or the training center each has their distinct advantages if you're the guy who just likes to get all the newest gimmicks and who wants to produce like new ammunition and so on and so forth the training center uh, the proving ground is for you so it could be very much the second option that you're going for if you rather want to invest into your um, into your soldiers going for bonds and training extra abilities which is a huge thing then you want to go for the training center personally um, I prefer the training center because it makes you independent of the gear that you're carrying around, but there can be an argument made for proving grounds as well. Next decision, resistance ring versus proving, uh, proving grounds. Resistance ring offers you the option for extra covered uh, ops uh, missions, which is just bonus rewards, bonus experience versus uh, proving grounds and if you see my playthrough I would probably build similarly I would either go guerrilla school resistance ring or guerrilla school training center and then resistance ring in this order these should be the three first buildings 
closely followed up by proving grounds I built that relatively late. Now, what other um, uh, what other buildings are useful for you in the midst of the game? I cannot stress enough how important um, power relays are of course important because you will need enough power, but I cannot uh, stress uh, enough how important laboratories uh, and infirmary are. Infirmary will uh, reduce your downtime because you can heal twice as fast. However, it can be delayed and uh, if if you would ask me if I do it again, I would probably shift the infirmary uh, towards a later stage in the game because you can always scan for um, for faster healing if you uncover the skirmisher faction. The labrat uh, laboratory is important to not fall behind the curve um, in terms of research and I would highly recommend building it and not underestimating it because this year allows you to go through all of the technological breakthroughs and take every, take advantage of every single one of them without being completely behind the tech curve. And if you, uh, whether or not you should build a laboratory, please maybe watch the video about the, uh, the power curve and how the enemies improve. It'll be a, one of the videos here in the playlist. Then you will also understand how the laboratory can help you to survive Legendary Iron Man. Now, what is you're now probably asking? Uh, what's second? What's the what's the final build order? I would go Guerrilla Tactics School and then Training Center Resistance Ring, starting with uh, GTS and either one afterwards as the first buildings. After I've done it check out uh, that uh, that you maybe can put a power relay on a power node in this playthrough unfortunately the power node was in the middle so i was forced to put it here optimally you might want to put it to the side and put a workshop in the middle uh, that didn't work for me so i needed to go with the power relay in the middle and therefore the workshop was no longer uh, usable so gts Resistance ring training center then upgrade to power relay so you have enough uh, power and then follow up with a laboratory and proving grounds these should be your first uh, your first uh, buildings later on follow with the infirmary uh, with uh, additional resistance communications which you can bridge until then quite quite nicely and of course later in the game psionic lab and shadow chamber um, I'm just giving you kind of the standard build order. There are deviations from it, like rushing the psionic lab and playing with psionic characters earlier in the game. And that's all good and fine, but you wanted to ask me what is the safest way of surviving. Good. Next up, the geoscape. And I clearly have a little bit advanced here in the geoscape, so you won't see as, uh, as much. But I wanted to explain a couple of things. Number one, the uh, bonuses for all of the um, for all of uh, the different continents. You should always start when you go into the geoscape to understand which bonus you would need. For instance, this here is a wonderful bonus. In this game, they are random, and in this game, Europe had the bonus to uh, that all armor and vest projects and proving grounds are completed instantly. So you get a bonus by freeing all of the um, countries on a um, on a continent and then building at least one uh, radio uh, station into the continent. You should double check what all of the bonus are doing and conquer accordingly. So that is the big plan. Deriving from that big plan, you would ask yourself, what do I need first? And the answer should always be, if you can get your hands on an engineer or a scientist, you should do that. If you can get your hands onto a plus one uh, resistance context, you should do that. If you can get your hands on either alien uh, elarium or alien alloys, which is usually called, um, which is usually called um, the, uh, the, the uh, a broken ship or abandoned loot or whatever, you should also do that. And the least favorable parts uh, should be probably going for only um, Intel, uh, going uh, only for, uh, for a little bit of supplies, um, only going for, for rookies. That's usually not what I would recommend you to do. So high priority is usually either Intel uh, uh, to uh, to get it. Resistance contacts, um, aventure power is nice, but the highest priority is always engineers and scientists as they are so vital in order to progressing. So if you see any of this, it should trigger your 
uh, it should trigger your interest. Everything else is then probably um, a little bit secondary. Earlier in my guide, in the original XCOM, I downvalued scientists and engineers. The reason why they are now so high in the priority is you can no longer buy them cheap from the uh, from the um, black market. They are actually quite expensive and often not available. So you need to per month you should have at least one of the uh, of each. Which means if you're in month number two, you should have two. Uh, you should have one of each already sitting there. Now. Clearly, I can't go through all of the potential scenarios that, uh, that will arise for you, but just understand the priorities of how to deal with the globe. Don't get too anxious about too many things happening at the same time. You, you rarely will have too much of a tough decision. You want to keep it simple. You want to go for the resources that you need, and you do want to uh, make sure that you're always approaching a next goal that is necessary. Expansion, if possible, if you don't have enough contacts yet, expand. You will need intel for that. Uh, go for engineers and scientists because you want to get everything freed up and you want to research fast. And once you have this core figured out, the other things such as additional loot, additional alarium, additional supplies, um, a couple of rookies, they are all nice, but they are just fillers for what is really working for you. And the core is what I've just uh, what I've just mentioned. I hope this was helpful for you so that you understand how to approach the uh, scenario. And we're now going through all of the guides. I highly uh, and highly welcome you and actually recommend to, to look through all of the guides. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, comment down below what you think about uh, the guides so far. I'm happy to answer questions. So, see you very soon and 